Welcome to my video. Just to let you know, I have no financial interest. To get new educational videos and updates, please subscribe to my channel. I'd be very grateful if you could please like and share this video, which I hope will give you a beneficial knowledge. So this is the first case, having small pupil with dense cataract on tamsulosin and floppy iris, so we usually use cyclopentolate 1% and phenylephrine 10% uh, to help with pupil dilation. And I usually do paracentesis and do it more anterior in these cases to avoid iris prolapse. So I usually go at 9 o'clock and about 2 o'clock parallel to the iris plane then the main incision has to be long tunnel to avoid iris prolapse till the end of the pupillary border so we go first directed up to be biplanar and then directed to the center of the pupil and i'm going to show you this by slow motion so we go with the keratome with the base down and tip up directed in the corneal stroma till the mark on the keratome and then change the direction to the center of the pupil down. Tripem blue and intracameral phenylephrine 10 percent is very important as well to aid with the uh, dilatation and then comes our magic tool which is the Helon GV so I inject at about 6 o'clock and you can see the pupil is dilated now and it maintains the dilatation. It is 10 times more elastic than the usual helon and it is super viscous. I put some dispersive viscoelastic on the cornea and it mechanically opens the pupil, deepens the anterior chamber and flattens the lens capsule and you can see how viscous it is compared to the usual helon and you go at 6 o'clock opposite the incision and fill all the anterior chamber this will flatten the capsule and uh, laxen the uh, zonules and this is my capsule access technique as discussed before I usually start at about o'clock and then go anti-clockwise with the cystotome on the helon cannula to maintain the anterior chamber depth until we complete the capsule rexus then we do hydro dissection and the pressing on the nucleus to see the wave anteriorly And please remember, the iris is your friend, so try to avoid any injury to the pupillary border during phaco emulsification. You can use the any technique, but I prefer divide and conquer as well, and keep the phaco probe in the center to avoid any iris injury and always keep the nucleus fragments in front of the phaco tip I prefer using bimanual irrigation aspiration this helped me 
to get the sub incisional cortex easily and in cases of small pupil it helps to avoid injury of the iris then we inject OVD cohesive type inside the bag again to implant the intraocular lens and I usually try to remove all the cohesive OVD to avoid rise of the intraocular pressure I go with the irrigation under the intraocular lens and the aspiration in the front and to avoid as well slight myopic shift if some cohesive viscoelastic is inside the bag then we inject the antibiotic and hydration of the wounds this is case number two the same technique anterior wounds but this case is different because the anterior chamber is very shallow about 2.2 millimeters we do the same technique of the anterior biplanar incisions so you will see I go with the keratome the same long tunnel take care because the AC is shallow in this case and you see the tunnel is till the edge of the pupil so we will avoid iris prolapse then come the magic tool which is helon 5 in this case which is more viscous than helon GV and you can see now how it dilates the pupil and maintains the anterior chamber throughout the phaco emulsification operation and you see it is more viscous than helon GV and it is viscoadaptive as well so it protects the cornea in cases of shallow AC and we hydrate the wound this is the end of the case it is the same steps as before remember the iris is your friend thank you for watching